Hey everyone, how's it going? Sitting low, coming at you with another video. This is going to be part two of the uh, C10 Air Ride install. And on this segment, what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do is cupping the lower control arms, which is pretty much mandatory if you want these uh, Chevy C10s to lay on the ground. Now, if you remember in part one, I was kind of talking about doing the uh, trapezoid shaped tray or whatever. I ended up just going with the round pipe because it was easier and it works just fine. So uh, stick around and uh, I'll show you how I done this. Okay you guys, so what I'm in the process of doing right now is actually this tube that I got here, or pipe, you know it's roughly uh, 3 16 just shy of a quarter wall thick. Um, I'm actually making cups, if you will. Because, uh, you know, I'm still undecided if I want to just do the typical round cup or I want to do that uh, that trapezoid shaped, uh, you know, tray, I guess, that cradle. I was, I was originally planning on doing that, but after looking at my buddy's truck and, you know, after talking to a couple of buddies of mine, they say just cup it and this and that. But I said I'm using these Dominator 2600 bags and these are, you know, pretty large bags. And, um... Uh, the inner diameter of this pipe is just over eight and a quarter inches, okay? And the, the specifications on this bag say that when it is fully collapsed at its widest po you know, point is eight inches. So that thing will literally have an eighth inch around all the way. That is not a whole lot of room, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, like I said, I'm still undecided if I'm just gonna go with the traditional cups or if I was gonna cut out some quarter inch and some three sixteenths and make some kinda kinda like one of these things here but uh... actually this this templates for that control arm over there but either way you get what I'm, you get what I'm saying so, I'm not a hundred percent sold so I'm just moving along figured I'd include you guys on what the hell I'm doing today it's a nice day, all my friends are out riding and shit, and I should be too, to be dead honest with you, but I just want this thing done. I want it laying on the ground, so I'm going to keep grinding. Another step, later. So I got my two cups cut, as you can tell by the pile of metal shavings there, and the angle grinder. Anyway... Here's the idea behind what they call cupping the control arms. I cut these cups at uh, two and three quarter inches. And the idea is you, you know, this is the actual one of the rear bag brackets, but you take, you make something like this out of some quarter inch, you put it on the bottom, you weld it all the way around. Obviously that, that's not for this, but, and then what you do is you take it, stick it on your control arm, trace around it then you cut all of this once you trace around it you cut all of that out basically this whole spring pocket that used to be there gets cut out and you weld in this sunken in airbag pocket that way when the bag is fully collapsed and deflated the control arm will be sunk and bottomed out pretty much where it right at that K member there so like I said uh I'm still not 100% sold on this because I'm not sure if I had I'd have more room on the. I mean, this would ultimately be easier. You just trim, weld the bottom plate in, drill a hole, you're good to go. And you know, from what people have, other people's opinions that I've asked, they said, "Oh, I'd go with the round because it it'll look nicer when it's done." And uh, you know, I I tend to disagree somewhat. I mean, it'd look, I guess, more factory-ish, but imagine like a, like a nice recessed, like, you know, tray that like sits down in there because I've seen, I've seen it, I've seen it done both ways and both ways work and both ways supply, uh, plenty of room for the bag. Um, another thing I need to consider is like I said my bags are slightly bigger than your average like a Firestone 2600 for example and once you make this cup here right 
like I said, when this thing's deflated, I'm only going to have like a, an eighth of an inch all the way around if I'm lucky. <laughs> if it doesn't rub. Hopefully it doesn't rub. Gosh, I don't want to jinx myself, but. If any like road debris or like pebbles or rocks or any shit like that were to, you know, end up finding their way down into this spring pocket, there would be really no way for it to, like, I guess, evacuate. So obviously I'm going to drill a drain hole in it, sort of like what GM did here, if I go with the cup method. But I think that with the, you know, with the trapezoid, let's call it the trapezoid tr cradle tray, whatever, you know, the bag, this one's for the other side, like I mentioned earlier, but the bag will be somewhere in this vicinity here, okay, because that's where the spring pocket lies. If, it, if this were all sunk down three inches or whatever, two and three quarter or whatever, um, you could, you know, the bag will deflate and you'd still have like all this room ar around the base of it. So like, like I said, if like little rocks or road fucking debris shit gets in there and, you know, it would at least have some means of being able to evacuate or, you know what I mean, so. Still undecided, boys. And girls, I, for, every, for any females that may be watching, I doubt there's a single one, but you never know. <sighs> like I said, uh, I ultimately think something like that, you know, it would be more labor intensive and it would require a lot more welding on my behalf than just the simple cup and round plate circle method. At the end of the day, I think I'd, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. Stay tuned. So check it out. Right now, I've got the cup. It's, like I said, it's not cut. It has not been cut yet. I'm just checking to see if I got any, like, room and clearance around this 2600 bag. So I got the bracket in, the upper bracket in the K-member. The bag bolts it to the bracket. I stuffed a plug. Uh, half inch MPT plug in the bag so it would you know hold its pressure and I set the ring in there and then I set a, just the base plate for it to sit on the control arm just so I could gauge how much wiggle room I actually do have in here around the bag and and where I would ultimately like to see the the cup positioned so you know I do have room but it's not a whole freaking lot like when you get down there into the second bellow I mean depending on where it is I'm gonna have it hopefully all the way around spaced evenly all the way around so when I do that you can get like just barely your fingertip in there and it's just you know fuck it we're gonna see how it works out so but yeah, kind of going through the mock-up process before I make any decisions on where to cut and whatever. And I also got to take into consideration that um, the arm is actually going to be coming up way higher. So with that being said, I need to, uh, you know, just figure out if it's going to all... I want my bag to s squish nice and flat. I don't want my bag to sit in there all twerked and janky because my cup is crooked or something stupid like that. So I'm just I'm trying to take my time with this stuff and just make sure everything looks good and works good and is going to function properly. So just figured I'd show you guys this uh this pipe here. I'll actually show you right here cuz I got a piece of this laying around still. Here's the tubing or the pipe. I should it's called pipe, I guess. I mean, it's, it is just shy of eight and three-eighths inches. Yeah, that's about eight. The inner diameter is about eight and three-eighths of an inch. Well, actually, no, that wouldn't be the inner diameter because I was measuring from the outside end. The inner diameter would be eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter ID. I bought an inch there, so... Yeah, just eight and a quarter. 
And like I said, when these bags are inflated and fully collapsed or whatever at their widest point, they are eight inches. So if you do the math, I will have one eighth of an inch of clearance all the way around this bag. So it's uh, it's kind of kind of sketchy when you think about it. So like I said, I'm still not ruling out making the 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 trapezoid trays or whatever, but. I don't know, everyone on the forums and my, even my friend Ryan that has a 69 GMC that he bagged out said that he's he has like over 10,000 miles on his truck and he used old whomped out worn bags to begin with and he's had no issues with it. So I'm thinking about just saying screw it and using these silly cups. I mean I just spent a half hour cutting them out and smoothing them and test fitting them and all that. So. I might as well, hell, what have I got to lose? If I don't like it, I can always redo it, right? That's all there is to it, so. Stay tuned for some more wacky action on this freaking C10 going down. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of my nightmare. I got the cups cut, but you guys already knew that. Then I took that sheet of quarter inch that I got, and I cut out these bottom plates for the... Uh, for the cups and I just gotta drill a hole in the center line these up and weld them but before I went ahead and do that what I did here on these bottoms on this one was made these little relief cuts just so when it is welded up it'll have that little bit of relief at the front and back so if any water or anything ever finds its way into this cup it'll have means of being able to drain so uh, just gotta do this to that one and then Drill the holes in the centers, and then just weld them. And then that part will be done. And then it's time to start chopping into the control arm, which I'm not exactly looking forward to, but, you know, it's, it's it has to be done. So let's get busy. All right, so I just finished up the cups, got them all smoothed out, and to hit them with a flap disc to, you know, make them look a little more presentable. But it don't look a lot nicer once it's all in there and painted and everything, but... They turn out pretty good. Uh, Welded the caps all the way around, except for obviously where the relief holes were, or the drain holes, whatever you want to call them. And on the inside, just threw a couple, a couple of booger welds in there, just for the hell of it. Drill the hole in the center, and that is what she be. That is pretty much what I'm working with now. All I got to do is cut a hole in my freaking lower control arm. Drop that suck sucker down in there and weld it up. And then, theoretically, the front, as far as the fabrication and all that stuff, will be done. And it's just a matter of painting everything, putting everything back together. Obviously, like I said, I still got to replace all the ball joints and stuff because I'm not going to go through all this trouble, have this whole truck apart, the whole front end, and not replace the original ball joints that are completely blown out. So, uh, yeah, you get the idea. Once it's in the truck, and weld it in the control arm, it'll be, it'll be good to go. And that is the key to getting low right there, man, these cups. So, if you got a C10, you want to bag it, and you want it to lay on the ground, prepare to make yourself some cups. So, without the cups, I mean, you know, it's still, I guess, it'd be kind of low if you had drop spindles and all that, but for the most part, Cupping these old C10 is, you know, to make them lay the way we want them to lay is mandatory. So, uh, next step, like I said, I just gotta, you know, boss up, line everything up, and cut my control arms up. But see, I want to take the time and measure and make sure everything's gonna work just fine before I go ahead and just start ripping holes in my freaking control arms because I only got one set of those, and it's not like I can just go to my local auto parts store and get another one you know so uh i don't think they stock too many parts for a 72 anymore so just gotta gotta do it right man so just taking the time measure everything and mock everything together put it together take it apart put it together again take it apart again and you know like they say in the carpentry field measure twice cut once so that's all i'm trying to do so all right moving on well, got the first arm cut. There is definitely no turning back now. 
just got to do a little bit of obviously I cut the circle a little smaller than what it needed to be just so I could you know I'd rather cut not enough than too much the first time so uh, I can get in there with the grinder and you know kind of shave out little bits here and there to make that uh, cup fit in there real nice uh, as far as the factory spring pocket goes that there is scrap metal so just got to keep grinding on this make sure that thing fits nice test fit everything tack it all together make sure everything fits nice and then once once I'm uh, confident that everything's gonna work and not rub and you know just work as it should go ahead and take it all apart and finalize weld everything so baby steps one step at a time like I said got control arm is it's cut ain't no turning back now so off we go alrighty so I just got this would be the passenger side lower control arm cupped welded up uh, I haven't touched it with a grinder yet I don't think I'm going to if I do grind anything I'm gonna grind the rest of this that used to be where the bump stop was you can still feel the heat coming off this thing but um as you can kind of see I'm glad I'm glad I didn't just go ahead and sink the cup in and weld it I'm glad I actually took the moment to uh, put everything all back together mock everything in place and put the bag in there and you know run the suspension through the travel because if I would have just you know welded the cup flush with the top of the plate the bag would have sat in there crooked all funny look at my hands that's real work son here's another indication so that metal shavings and shit yep your boy's been getting it in today started it Monday and it is now uh, Saturday and you know I kind of took a couple of days off working on it to get some stuff and whatever but been making some decent decent progress on it I'd say um, like I was saying the cup I kind of well, this thing's still orange and hot so but you see how I kind of see how the cup is like angled the cup actually sinks sinks down deeper over here by the ball joint and not as deep over here by the by the uh, by the spindle I guess I don't that's what would you call that just the control arm shaft I don't know but yeah by the ball joint you want to sink your cup a little lower than you would back here that way your bag like I said when I jacked everything up had the bag in there the bag sat in there nice and perfect you can see the the ring around where it was sitting and uh, it's gonna work so uh, on to the next one all right so check it out I'm done with the lower control arms and I've got this one bolted up got the bag in place I don't have the bolts in this uh, upper bag plate, but I got the two uh, back bolts in there. But check this out, man. This thing is going to lay. Like the bag's got plenty of room all the way around. Check it. Go up with it. See the bag hidden in there, pretty much closed up in that cup, but there's still about a, a quarter inch gap all the way around, so the cup is not going to hit the K-member or the upper bag plate. It just it just kind of closes the bag in there. I am going to actually, I'm thinking I'm going to trim the uh, bag cup down in the back side of it, just so uh, when the when the bag butterflies this way through its you know motion of travel with the control arm it doesn't even think about rubbing on the back but as of now you can see the lower control arm is bottomed out on the K, on the K member so this thing's gonna lay hard whoa you be more careful buddy but anyway this thing's gonna get stupid left too I think these uh, I think these cups turned out pretty decent, you know. I was, I was reluctant to do them because, like I said, I wasn't sure about how much clearance I'd have around. But as you can see, granted, they're not inflated, but, you know, this is a pretty solid bag. It's, it's like a 600 PSI bag. And uh, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with it. So once everything's painted and back together, this thing's good to go.
Um, I was about to say that all the fabrication on the front end, as far as the bag shit, is done. But I kind of that would have been jumping the gun a little bit because I still got to come up with a a shock that works because you can't have a truck or a car with air ride with no shocks. It will ride like a bouncy piece of shit. And it'll be a, just a wobbly death trap. A lot of people do it for some reason, and uh, that's why you know a lot of people are skeptical to do air ride on their stuff because they rode in their buddy's car that was all hooptify with no shocks and. It rode like a wobbly frickin' death trap. This thing, new ball joints, upper and lower, all that good stuff. I'm gonna actually add a sway bar to the front. So I gotta weld some tabs to the front in order to hook a, connect a link to it. Well, actually, it's got that hole right there in the uh, lower control arm. I might just use the typical old school bushing style. But, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I just gotta hit the salvage yard, scrap yard, see what I can come up with. But yeah, lower bag mounts are done. I got this one all bolted up and ready to go and it's gonna get a shit ton of lift and it's gonna lay hard. You just see it. Bags just disappear. See you later. Like I said, it's still got a quarter inch gap all the way around from the lower uh, control arm cup to the uh, upper bag mount. And it's picking the truck off the jack stand right now, so I'd say uh, I don't got to worry about that cup bottoming out. And it actually is uh, using the, the bump stop in the bag. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, all in all, I'm, uh, you know, this is my first time ever. Uh, pie cutting a freaking upper control arm and this is my first time ever freaking uh I guess it would be cupping it would be the term cupping your lower control arm and uh you know if you just take your time measure really think about stuff hit the internet up see what other people ran into as they were doing it and you know what other people have done with their trucks and you know, you just get a lot of good ideas. And plus, uh, shout out to that dude, the dude on YouTube, um, the Fab Forum. I really enjoy watching that guy's channel. He's, you know, he builds a lot of cool shit as well. He's he's like a full time building cool shit, dude. I just do this shit every now and again, and uh, you know, he inspires me, motivates me to work on this stuff. So, like I said, step. Step completed, lower control arms done, bags and everything ready to go in. The only thing I got to get is a new set of U-bolts for the lower control arms because on these old pickups, the lower control arms are held on by freaking U-bolts, if you can believe that, you know. So I got to order a new set of U-bolts because I cut the old ones and that's just a temporary just trailer axle freaking U-bolt uh, I had laying around, so... Once I get all the ball joints and everything in, I'll be throwing this, well, painting everything, throwing the spindles in, and plumbing the shit, and moving on from there. So, I guess uh, if you're enjoying this, stick around.